So there never was anyone sitting on a bus? There never, ever has been, was, will be, or is someone sitting on a bus. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, really. Yeah, no one's ever sat on a bus. No one's ever driven a bus. Yeah. Not even the dream bus. <laughs> no, not even the dream bus. No, especially the dream bus. <laughs> especially the dream bus. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I hope you were charged double for being late. Well, you, uh, usually the rule. Got a bit nice. Oh, right. Well, I don't know whether to say it may be a mercy or not that you've missed the uh, introductory, introductory talk, which has just come to an end. <laughs> an astonishingly long introductory talk. You might be getting a sense of why this is such a, seems such an outrage to what I'm going to call again in inverted commas, I'll put it, the normal mind, whatever that is, or the normal way of thinking. It's just outrageous, absolutely outrageous. You want to start a fight in a pub quickly, this is a good way to start it. <laughs> Are you suggesting that there's always an awareness or whatever you want to call it, of there being no one there? Because to me it seems that that's an extra. So, somehow. No, I'm not suggesting that. No, I'm not quite sure that I'd know what that would mean. Well, well, it's just whatever's that. happening. Hmm? You thought I said what? That there's always an awareness? No, not always. You said, as I understood you to say, that the, there was suddenly a loop of the realisation that there's no one there and no one's sitting on the bus. Yes, that's how it can happen. I'm not suggesting that's how it always happens, but that's how it can happen. Yeah. And I think if it happens that's, that way, it tends to be more of a shock. So maybe there's more that's then more impactful on the apparent character. Yeah. That's certainly not that's always. Well, no, I would sort of refer, I made reference to Jiddu Krishnamurti, who I strongly suspect. There was never any need for any kind of realisation because probably the sense of self had never formed or never fully formed. I've met others, well, I've never met him, but I've met others who seem to me like that from what they report. Yeah. Does non duality mean that there's no existence at all? If yes, then what, what is my subjective experience in this material world? I wouldn't say that it means that there's no existence, no. What I would say is, how can we put this? There is an appearance, and this is an appearance. And by saying it's an appearance, I suppose what is meant is it's not what it seems to be. It's not saying it's not real, and it isn't saying it's real. It's not saying either of those things. There is, cl There clearly seems to be, and that word seems is very important, there clearly seems to be something happening. Some people use the word, and I use this word as well, but I would only use it whilst glossing it as well, because it can be misunderstood. So some people, and I sometimes say, this is an illusion which does not mean it doesn't exist, it doesn't mean it's unreal in that sense. What an illusion is, is something different to how it appears to be. So to the separated person, this is another way of putting it, right? To the separated person, unless they've got a head full of psilocybin or LSD at the time, this just seems real. It only seems real, right? When this is seen, when there's a, let's say, awakening and this is seen, then it's seen that it is, not that, not that it's unreal, but that it's both. It's both real and unreal. Well, you could say it's real, <coughs> but it's, re it's reality, but not as we know, we generally know. It's real, but not in the way it's been experienced by the separated person up to that point. 
So it's both, I mean, and, uh, something that I say a lot and have written a lot, something other speakers sometimes say, sometimes some of them say more than me, is that this is both full and empty. It's both. How can it be full and empty, the mind says? There's no way of explaining that. But nevertheless, that, I don't want to call that an experience, because an experience for me is something that happens for the separated character. So rather than saying that's an experience, what I say is that can be seen, that may be seen. That this is empty, it's totally empty. Totally empty, it's just like, well, it's less than gossamer or mist arising out of nothing because mist is something, but it has that kind of quality to it, we could say. It's also absolutely full. So this is the point to introduce another idea, which I always introduce at some point, and we haven't got there yet. You know, it's empty, but it's also full. What's it full of? Unconditional love. And now, for the mind, maybe we have another affront or another insult. How can you say this is all unconditional love? Look, have you not noticed what's going on in the world? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have noticed that. And to the mind it sounds appalling to say that this is an outpouring of unconditional love, full stop. But again, I have to apologise on behalf of oneness. That's what's so frequently reported as being seen, not just here, but from many other apparent people as well. Yeah. So this is nothing, and that can be... You know, when I say this is nothing and everything, I'm not just spouting nonsensical paradoxes, and I'm not just spouting words, I'm trying to describe something which can be reported on. This is a dangerous word to say, use the word experience, but I use it because I can't think of any other. It can be experienced, but not by anyone. There's no person that can experience that, but it can be experienced by no one. And it can, or another way of putting it, it can be directly seen. This is empty and it's full. But that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it does. And again, we're back to apologising. But nevertheless, in the story of this, we can use the phrases like time and time and time again, many, many people have seen that this is both empty, it's nothing, and it's full, it's everything. Many, many people, people have seen this in an illusion called the past. Probably many, many people are seeing this now in an illusion called the present, and many, many people will see this in another illusion called the future. Yeah. And again, you know, I mean, God, what a long, what a lot of yakking from the front, and yet, really, that's all that's being said. This is empty and it's full. What's it full of unconditional love? Do you not read the newspapers, Richard? Yes, I do, and I'm sorry, but it's still full of unconditional love. Yeah. Sorry, your follow-up question. Um, I forget a follow-up question. Yeah. So if, if there is a believer in non-duality, for a believer in non-duality, what other worldly material goal is worth pursuing? Because if this is indeed an illusion, then my goal should simply be to break the illusion. And just take sitting meditation all day long. Yeah, well, well I, 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 let's take that bit by bit. I'll take the first bit. I don't know whether we'll get beyond that. First, I would say, you know, the phrase a believer in non duality really means nothing. I mean, a believer is just a believer. It doesn't mean, you know, you, can't, you cannot be a believer in non duality because you can't know what non duality is. I don't know what non duality is, and I can talk of it. You know. This is something that's kind of seen, but not by the person. And then sometimes where it's seen, this great flow of words comes out or whatever. So you can't really be a, you could be, you know, you could be a believer in, I don't know, 
I can't, I, I stop there because I can't really sort of match that onto the word non-duality, but I'm sure it can be done. You know, so that would be the starting point of that. But then to take it a little bit further beyond that into what you next said, to say, you, again, there's no recommendations here. There is simply an acknowledgement that what that thinks it is and what this, as a person, thinks it is, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It has no bearing. All of that goes out of the window. This is again why this can be, this can generate very, very strong feelings, and they're not all delightful feelings in, you know, particularly perhaps for someone who's been very dedicated to a spiritual path. I mean, I was. I mean, I spent 30 years of very dedicated spiritual seeking. When I first came across this message, message, it's not a message, when I first came across this communication, I, I just was bored by it, I wasn't remotely interested in it, I just went away again for about two or three years, didn't go near it again. Some people who've got a strong spiritual seeking path, they come across it, they get very angry with it. I went away for two or three years, then I came back, and then I got very angry with it. But there was something about it that, in spite of my anger, I, I know, I mean, it's kind of funny, but I actually also meant that seriously. I spent a lot of time in talks like this feeling very angry, and yet something, there was something underneath all of that that I can't explain, but heard and was fascinated, even though it didn't understand. So there's absolutely no shoulds here. There's no shouldn'ts, there's no shoulds. It's just what happens. What's happening is, I don't know, here what's happening is words are happening, sound, slight feeling of discomfort in the knee. Maybe a fleeting thought, will there be another question? What's happening there? Eyes blink, mouth just moved into a slight smile. Arms crossed, slightly more of a smile. That's it, that's, that's all reality is. Thought in the mind, maybe, I don't know, probably, usually there is, isn't there? A thought in what we think of as the mind, it isn't really a mind, it's just a flow of thoughts. That's something else really important. I use common parlance. Most of us use common parlance when so I talk about a thought in the mind. It's nonsense. There's no mind. The mind is, the, the, the thought flow is the mind. There isn't anything else. It's just the thought flow. When I say the thought flow, I include in that whatever's in awareness. Feelings, sounds, sensations. Things the, sense, the senses we have from the material world uh, are ultimately ultimately setting you up for an illusion anyway, because you look at someone else and think, oh, they're this, they're that, or that's not that. You're interpreting them as an individual, and, and you're interpreting everything as an individual. Yeah. And because the senses you're given, for example, if no one could see, then there'd be more of an energetic feel. Uh, and then if you couldn't feel, or you're, you had no kinesthetic touch, or, you, you know, and you hear people that are born with those senses, you know, they'd be in a dream world, so they'll experience what you're saying. Um, I just think the senses we're given from the material world give you such a such a pull to this world, and then there is a, it does resonate that it, it is an illusion, completely, and there are feelings that well oh, yeah I totally get it totally get it and I get it it's not I I get it it's it's experience now is I feel it, it, it's felt, but then you get so easily pulled back into the material world and you can also say well, that that's part of it as well that's because that, all there is is. All there is is oneness. Oneness is also the illusion. Oneness is not the illusion. Oneness is, yeah, because we have this long list of what is what is oneness and what isn't. You know, illusion and temper, that's not oneness. Oh, actually it is, because oneness yeah. is everything. So mm. I just think that it, it is such a bizarre illusion because we look in a mirror, you know, you know we look in a mirror and we see an individual and, and the whole environment that we live in is set up for an individual. And, yes. and it does resonate, and then you go out of this building into 
advertising noise and just madness, but also part of the realisation is I get it, but I get I guess is that is all part of it as well. And it couldn't yeah. exist any other way. And what's the last thing you said there? Um, and, and it couldn't be any other way. Yeah. Nothing could ever be any free. different to what it is. It wouldn't be free. Yeah, I mean, the, re the only reason I'm going slightly yeah there is because n now we've leapt into the future. It wouldn't be free, but yeah, everything is exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like an astonishing, I mean, the way I've just put it, then it sounds like an astonishingly banal thing to say. Maybe it is, but I think it's also very deep yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah Nothing deep. can be <clears throat> any other way than what it is. Mm. And... Also, that is the entirety of existence. There is no future into which we can go out. But talking about a future into which we can go out is part of what is. Yeah. But there's no time. Not even a moment. There is just... Yeah. It just seems because there's no instruction manuals that come with life. You you just you, you go obviously you, you you I just my own personal experience if that is the correct way of putting it even though it's not is you, you you're brought back, you're rooted back to your the, the material world and you talk about examples of your parents all these different people wishing you know all these things but you, you can't help the fact that we're in a material world whether it's an illusion or not and there there is no actual individual it's just I just find it so bizarre how it, it the senses we're given just make us feel so individual when it's not the case yeah. Again, I and, could, and the language, yeah. and the language, like with, with Tony as well. Um, I said to him before, you know, it resonated. The message with Tony in yourself just completely resonates. The language, because it's contradictory in, in in a way, and and it, and it can't really be explained. It it it, it makes people, f or it makes the apparent individual think that they can't actually ever reach this when actually it's already there. Yes, it's already there. But then you get pulled back into being an individual again saying, oh, I don't quite get it, but actually yeah. it's all part of it. But it still feels like it's not it, because that's also, I suppose, part of it. Yeah. And, and it course. sounds totally ridiculous, I know. But, the, the, yeah, everything, everything is unhelpful. But the, the part the part that I resonate with is that everything around you is set up to make you think it's not the case. What's not the case? The, 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 there's no individual. Yes. There's no separate self. Absolutely. Oh, totally. Totally. We live in a story yeah. which is totally addicted but, yeah, to the individual. Knows, you know, when you spend time with it, like a, 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 a small child or an animal, you look at it and think, well, wow, there, there, there's no individual there. I totally get it. Of course. There's no time. You don't worry about it. And then, bang, back into stress. And yeah. I've got to do that well of time and all that. <clears throat> So, yeah. It's a complete mystery why, for some of us apparent people, a fascination with this arises. It's a total mystery here. Like I say, you know, when I first came across this, my only real reaction to it was boredom and lack of interest. And then two or three years later, I came back and there was a fascination. Not only can I not explain it, it would just be idiotic to even try. It's just, again, what's happening. You can make a story out of it, and if you go and look at the spiritual paths, you will find quite a collection of stories that will explain that. But they're just stories. They can't be known. They're unknowable. I mean, one of the, way to, one of the ways to kind of cut through quite a lot of you know, what the mind does, which is continually kind of tying us up in hypothesis and wondering how the things work and all of this fantasy about how things might work is just a simple recognition that it's almost all unknowable. I mean actually you could say everything except this is unknowable, this is what's known, now this is what's actually known and almost everything else is unknowable. 
I mean, everything else is at least unknown, but a lot of it is unknowable. But the mind kind of tangles us up, tangles us up. You see the way language works. There is no us, but nevertheless, let's go on using this diabolically dualistic language. The mind tangles us up with the promise that things can become known in the car. Certain things cannot become known, they are unknowable. Sorry, to the mind they are unknowable, you say. I'm not following you here. If this is all there is, what else is there that is unknowable? For the mind, well, it's, it's a hell of a lot. It is relating to the mind. Yeah, that's, that's related that's to the mind. Oh, of course. Thank no, you. without the mind, nothing is either known or unknown, or unknowable. Yeah. That's without the mind that, again, doesn't exist. So the thought stream comes up with, oh, well, there's something which is unknown, which perhaps I can get to know if I go and sit for long enough in the Himalayas at the feet of this very famous guru. Or whatever, or abnegate myself and perform sacrifice to, I don't know. Yeah, the mind has always come up with very ingenious stories about how things that are unknowable might become known. Yeah. Is most, if not everything, the mind comes up with part of the story, illusory? Yeah, I'd say related to seeking some form of completion or fulfilment. Yeah, probably most. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, you know, some people talk about, yeah, there's some people talk about the functional mind, oh. which just gets things done. Mm. So, yeah, that's okay. I mean, yeah, the story. I need to change the, the gearbox elaborate... on my car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the mind's really useful for that. Yeah. But all of the kind of abstract stuff, yes, it's kind of story, 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 story. Mm -hmm. Some of it delightful, some of it ugly, some of it maybe useful in some ways, some of it not so useful. Mm. A lot of it very destructive, maybe, in terms of the story of my life. In a way, yeah. yeah. And usually, at the root of it, you know, this I'm in control. I'm in control. I am the managing director of this project called my life. I sit behind a big important desk and send out orders, and these orders are carried out. That's what the mind tends to mm. kind of think, yeah.